Good morning. Um, this week, um, my message, as I was praying, um, came to something that I've been grappling with for the past, I'd say, a month or two. And it was, it was about prayer. Now, I know I pray, right? I pray. I know that a lot of you guys pray too. But, it, but whatever the reason, God has given me this heart to say that, you know what? You need to pray more. There are many instances uh, leading up to today's, uh, today that God actually woke me up in the middle of the night, like 4 o'clock in the morning. Like I'll be sleeping, and I'm a, I'm a good sleeper. And when I sleep... I sleep like a dog. I mean, you can't wake me up. Okay? I, I go into really deep sleep, and, I, and, and I, I'm really refreshed. I don't remember when I fall asleep. That's how deep I fall into sleep. But many times leading up to this, I woke up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. I'm a morning person, but 4 a.m., man, that's, that's, you know, it just wakes you up. I don't know if that ever happened to you. But for me, it allowed me to kind of say, you know what, I need to, why am I waking, the, why it, why am I waking up early in the morning? What is this? The, the logical thing is to go back to bed, right? It's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? I said, an hour and a half, I can go to bed, go to sleep, right? You go to bed. That's the logical thing. But something was tugging at my heart. And I began to pray. I began to pray on my bed. I began to pray, lean down on my bed and pray. And today's message, the title is, that I came up with is Active and Silent. Before we get into the, uh, the, the message, uh, let's read the, uh, the Bible verse here. passage comes from Matthew 26, verse 36 to 44, and it says this. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He he took Peter and two sons of of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here, keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My God, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My God, if this is not possible for, for, for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away one more time and prayed the third time saying the same thing. This is the word of the Lord. When I was growing up, um, have you guys seen this advertisement? Got milk? Question mark? This, this is probably one of the most famous taglines when it comes to advertising. Everybody heard this before. God's milk, right? And then I, I remember seeing uh, 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 advertisement commercials with famous people drinking milk, and they have that famous what? That milk mustache, right? Did it actually make you want to drink milk? So Myung said yes. But we all drank milk, right? They 
Unfortunately, one of the unfortunate things about this advertisement is that this tag, this, this hashtag, or this tag, uh, tagline was, became more famous than actually milk product itself. Out of 20 plus years of this advertisement, do you know that the milk sale went down? But they kept, kept on with this, this got milk advertisement. Why? Because it was famous. Everybody talked about it. But the problem was, it was missing something. It missed the focus on why people were not drinking milk. But they kept doing it. They kept using it. You know, reading through this, and then, uh, and then um, it kind of reminded me of, of me. Every time when something goes wrong, I say, did I pray? I need to pray. When my students comes to me and said, hey, Pastor Jay, I have this dilemma, I say, let's pray. When someone comes to you for an issue with problems, what do you say? You say, let's pray. It's almost like, you got milk? But do we really understand? Did I ever, did I fully understand what it means to pray? Because I use prayer when I am deprived. I use prayer when everything has been exhausted, the only thing that I can do now is to rely on prayer. But is that the true motive behind prayer? Is that what God intended for us to use prayer? When we look at the Bible, and when we see in the book of Genesis, God spoke to Adam and Eve, like literally spoke to them. They, they walked in the presence of the mighty God. And they spoke, and God spoke directly to them. And however, when sin was introduced, this chasm developed between God and us. And that communication line became broken. And then in the Old Testament, God used the prophets to relay his message. And in the, Old, in the New Testament, in the form of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ being the mediator, he became a source of communicating with God himself. What is prayer? What is prayer to you? If you look at the basic definition of prayer, basically it is it's talking to God. It's having communication with our maker. Yes, there are many ways that you can pray. We are taught to how to pray, right? We are taught to, to know there are different types of prayer. Today's message is not about that. Today's message is about the essence of a prayer. What is literally what prayer is? For me, I believe prayer has two distinct components. There's the active component to prayer, and there's the silent component to prayer. If you go back into the scripture here, verse 39 says, this is where Jesus, prior to him being arrested, prior to going through that suffering on the cross, he goes and prays. And verse 39 says, and going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed and saying, my father, if, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will but as yours. Here you see Jesus Christ 
asking his father sincerely, saying, God, I know what is about to happen to me. I know the pain and the struggle and all the weight of that sin is going to be on me. I see the darkness. I know what is to come. And I can't do this. You need to take this cup from me. You need to remove this cup from me. And he says, but not as I will by yours. And then he goes back to his disciples, and he sends falling asleep. And he asks them to get up and pray with me so that, we, so that you won't fall into temptation. And then he is still in agony, and he goes back, and what does he do again? He prays. Verse 42, it says again, for the second time he went away and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, let your will be done. And, and, and if you read further, Christ goes back again, and he sees his disciples falling asleep. And then he comes back again, and he prays the third time. And the third time, he prays exactly the same prayer as the second. And when I read this, I was touched and I was moved. Because if you look at the first prayer of Christ, there was a petition. A petition says, God, move, remove this cup from me. But I know, but there is your will. And as he continues to pray, the second and third prayer, his prayer changes a little bit. And it says this, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink this, your will be done. It went from what I desire, it went from what my limitation was to say, God, you know what? If this is your will, I understand the will of your Father. I understand what you're asking me to do. So let your will be done. See, the active part I realize of prayer is not necessarily getting your prayers answered. That is important too. But the active prayer, active portion of prayer, is when we go after him and when we seek him and when we're on our knees and when we're praying to him, my heart changes. My desires change. And the more I communicate with him, I, I slowly but surely start to be in line with the will of the Father. That, to me, is the active part of prayer. Christ wanted the cup to be removed. But through the prayer, he realized the will of the Father and said, if this cannot be removed from me, I will drink it. And in faith, I will go. That is the active part. That's why we pray. Not because we want to seek and to, 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 to have the answer prayer, whatever we're praying for. That is important. That's one portion of it. But before that happens, the movement, the active part of it needs to be from within in our hearts. For our hearts to be aligned with the will of the Father. And my moving and my understanding the will of the Father right now? Or am I using just like God milk as a tagline to get something from Him? I'm not saying that's bad. But if you look at the communication between Adam and Eve and before the fall, there was a communication. There was a sincere communication. And it wasn't all about just about getting something they wanted. It starts with 
what I desire. And as we pray, and as we commune, as we seek, as we communicate with him, it ends with God's will be done in my life. And when I change from within, then even though my prayers and my situation doesn't change, because I have been changed from inside out, that's okay. I'm in a good place. I can move. I can endure. I can get up and I can still worship because of that. Active part of prayer is not the answer prayer sometimes. And the active part is when I move and align with the His will and what He wants from that situation. One of the, very, uh, one of the, uh, the hard part about prayer for me sometimes is the waiting part of it. Not only, not just waiting, like silently waiting. That is horrible. We don't like waiting. I don't know about you guys, I don't like waiting. When I go, during, like we have when, at work, when I go to lunch, the way I pick where I eat is how long the line is. Because I don't like waiting. And I, ca- I catch myself sitting in my car in this long drive, long line at, at the drive through and I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing here? And I look over inside the store, there's hardly anyone in there. But you see these hordes of cars in their car waiting. And I was like, what am I doing here? So I get out of line because I don't like waiting. And I go into the store and I order my food. And when I come out, guess what? The very people who were waiting, they're still waiting. As a society, we don't like waiting. I don't like waiting. And the worst part of it is silently waiting. That is awkward. That sucks. However, when you look, read through the Bible, time and again and and again and again, it mentions about waiting. It mentions about silently waiting. In Psalm 62, verse 5 says this, For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. My soul, you need to wait in silence, because why? Because my hope lies in him. I love this verse because here in silence we don't just wait for sake of waiting. We don't just say, you know what, I pray so I gotta wait. And, 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 and the Bible says I gotta silently wait. But the latter part of this verse says, why? Because there is hope in him. There's hope in God. There's hope in Jesus Christ. There's hope in that empty grave. You guys know where Buddha is? He was cremated, right? And all his relics are buried. You guys knew that? I didn't know that. It's buried in Sri Lanka. Confucius is buried in China. Muhammad is buried in Saudi Arabia. Joseph Smith, ironically, is buried in Illinois. I thought he'll be buried in Utah, but Illinois. Jesus Christ was also buried. And he was placed into a tomb. 
but unlike other gods of this world, God does not have a tomb. Christ does not have a tomb. His tomb is empty. Where do I find hope when I wait? It is not a blindly waiting for the answer. It is in the hope in Jesus Christ. I know that his burial is empty, and I know that he was risen from the dead. That's where my hope is. That's why I can endure. That's why I can silently, prayerfully, quietly wait for him. The hope has been realized through the empty grave. Does that give you encouragement to wait on him? Does that move you to say, you know what? I see that. I'm not just praying to this empty God, to this empty space. But there is this God who has been risen from the dead. And when I realize that his grave is empty, that is hope. That is the power. That's where my hope lies on that empty grave. In Acts chapter 1, the early church, before Christ ascended to heaven, he ordered them, he ordered all the disciples to not to depart from Jerusalem until to, to wait for the promise from the Father, which was the Holy Spirit. For 40 days, Christ showed himself and walked around teaching them about the kingdom of God. And right before he ascended, he told them this command we all know as the Great Commission. But before they were able to exercise that very commission, Christ said, don't leave Jerusalem. Wait until you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And ironically, in the upper room is where the disciples were. As they gathered together and as they prayed, the wind, gushing wind came, and they saw this fire, and all of them, according to the Bible, it says that they were baptized with the Holy Spirit as they prayed. I love that verse. I love it. And here's my tagline for 21 Dawn Prayer. As you all know, this Thursday is the first day for our EM ministry to start our 21 Dawn Prayer. The KM will start on, 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 on Friday, but we will start on Thursday. It's on, second, on the second floor at 6 a.m. in the morning, except for on Sundays. We'll have, we'll, we'll have a prayer meeting. We'll have a, a worship time, a very short message, and then most of the time we'll be dedicated to praying. These disciples, prior to this, they were actually weak. We see that throughout the gospel. But when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, they went out and they changed the world. They literally died for the sake of Christ. My, our desire and my desire, all of us, is to have a communion and have a communication with Jesus Christ on a daily base. For some of you, I don't know what your prayer life is like. For some of you, I don't know what, what you are going through right now in your life. 
I don't know what the struggles that, that you're going through. I don't know if you ever felt the presence of God through prayer. But if I'm reading this Bible verse correctly, it says that before we do anything, we need to get filled with and baptized with the Holy Spirit. Have we been baptized with the Holy Spirit? Have we been empowered by the grace of God to go out, to live a life that is separate from this world, to be spiritually awakened, and to seek after Him? If you, if you are at a place in your life where it doesn't make sense, what a great opportunity for you to come and to kneel and petition and to have communication with God. It doesn't really have to be here at church, but there is this thing, a beauty of corporate worship, corporate prayer too. But if you can't make it, wouldn't you join us at your home, 6 a.m., get up and pray. Get up and seek. Get up and communicate and realize, don't you want, you for, for, don't you want to know the will the Father has for you? I know I do. When we align with him, that's a good place to be. That is the place where we know we can find refuge and hope because that's where we know that Christ, God himself, wants us to be. And that's why we can have hope. That's why we can wait. And remembering that there's an empty grave that proves that Christ is alive and he's alive and listening to each and every one of our prayers. That is the motivation for us as we come. We're called the upper room ministry. Upper room ministry is where they were filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. And these guys went out and changed the world. Let us, as a UR ministry, live up to that name of upper room. And what that means, to be filled with the Spirit and to go out to making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's pray together. How is your communication with God these days?